University District Councilman Rashid Wyatt is calling on the state legislature's health committee to show their support for bills that would curb the uptick of tobacco use among children. He joins us now to talk more about what he is calling a public health crisis. Councilman, thank you so much for coming in. Thank this you for afternoon. having me. Um, so you sent a letter to the state. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about what you are seeing here in Buffalo. Well, you know, the proliferation of these vape shops, not only the vape shops themselves, but in the stores, is really a concern. Um, matter of fact, we have just put some, adjusted some resolutions for our legislature regarding um, uh, stores convenience stores so that again vapes are not allowed in there it's a, if you go through these these communities you see the proliferation of them and our children are always going in there and i'm not very sure that these store owners are not selling to the children they are selling the children and so i know that the state has talked about how we are trying to curb smoking vaping but if we're allowing these vape stores to open as conveniently as they want and we're allowing these store owners to sell it as much as they want then we're really not helping the situation we're just making it worse there is right now already a uh, movement to that end in Albany with the state legislature. Right. There are some bills that are being considered in this session. You're obviously not directly involved with them, right. but generally what do those bills propose to do if adopted? Um, basically banning vape mm -hmm. and menthol, and well, menthol. menthol is banning menthol. And unfortunately, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of appetite for that. However, we want to let them know that the impact that it's making on the citizens in our city, we want to try to press that issue. Because again, when we think about the menthol, and we think about vaping, and we think about the, the health effects, it's huge. Yeah. Now, the, the money that we're spending with Medicaid and Medicare and the emergencies that our children are experiencing, families, especially in black and brown communities, we have to do something because that's where our dollars are going to th pay those expenses. What is the importance of collaboration, whether it's on a local, state level, especially with community groups, what have you, all coming together to work towards this? This is, this, that's huge. And we've actually had some hearings in which we had the African-American Health Equity Group come and stand with us, Stan Martin. Um, we've had Roswell come and give testimony. And so we have some heavyweights who have been doing this research for a long time. And so that's critically important. I'm even asking the community, as we get closer and we as we put legislation forth on behalf of the city, I'm going to need them to come out and say, this is important. This is important for our children. This is important for families. And we have to look at how we can curb this so that we can have a healthier society. And that local effort is really going to be important depending on what happens if in Albany. If, for example, the legislature decides not to take that issue up or if it doesn't make it in this session, there are still things that, th that can happen locally among right. the Buffalo Common Council and even maybe even the legislature. Talk right. a little bit about that. And so if we can put a local law in place, working with Erie County, as a matter of fact, we can still make this happen. Um, and then hopefully we'll lead the way because, again, I think so many times we allow these outside interests, big tobacco to come in and they have big dollars to curb things. But we need to take ownership of it in our own way because we know that it's affecting the residents in our city tremendously. You talk about the shops, the products themselves, it's also the marketing too. And you know, specifically here we're talking about children. How is that geared toward, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, in, in my particular district, in a one-mile one radius, I have five vape shops. Wow. In a one-mile radius, and access actually closer to schools, and they're not supposed to be near schools, but they are. And so I think, again, when we work together and we address these issues and the dollars that we're spending that we have no control over because it just seems as though the number is growing and growing, especially as it relates to high school students, um, we have to do something about it. And again, if us coming together collectively, um, with, especially with the in information that Roswell provides us, that's our cancer center. Mm. They know the ill effects. As a matter of fact, I had an individual come who was looking for a vape license, and he told us that it was safer than smoking. Mm. He said that on the Florida Council. I just lost it because that's the type of misinformation that is endangering the health and well-being of our children. Uh, what is the expectation, uh, logistically speaking, over the next couple of weeks for you guys? You intend on introducing this legislation next week? Did you do it today? No. What is the timing of everything? We, we're looking for putting legislation by the next council meeting, which gotcha. is in two weeks, okay. um, and then getting people to come in for the public hearing for to reinforce it further in hopes that we can pass it through the council. I'm glad you mentioned that public hearing because we will have that information um, when they have that counts when they have the meeting scheduled for that public hearing it'll be on our website wivb.com university district councilman Rashid Wyatt thank you for being here thank you for really having appreciate me appreciate it all right let's send it back to Todd now for another check